Once again, we'll be looking at an important uh, geometric theorem and how to prove that theorem. This congruent supplement theorem is an extremely useful theorem in proving many other theorems in geometry and important and easy understanding. Some might even consider it to be uh, akin to the transitive property um, of congruence or equals or anything else. Um, I have listed on there the common core standards. Uh, they, common core standards, place an emphasis on proving theorems um, about lines and angles. Uh, and so you can go look that up if you would like. One disclaimer before we start, uh, the rigor or detail that I show in this proof is not necessarily what's going to be required of you in your class um, or what you're going to require of your students if you're a teacher. Um, I'm trying to provide a limited yet detailed enough to be able to express the big idea of the proof. So when proving the congruent supplements theorem, we always are looking for um, what is in the if statement, right? The if statement, whenever we have a conditional, that is always going to be our given. In this case, and I'm going to do a column proof here. Um, in this case, our first statement is going to be about supplementary angles. Now, it doesn't matter where these angles are or what they look like, so I can just generically call them angle 1 and angle 2 and say they are supplementary. So I've got two angles, 1 and 2, and all I know about them is they're supplementary, and that's given to me. And then we also know that another angle exists that turns out to be supplementary to one of these two angles. It doesn't matter which one. We'll just say 2. So we'll say angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary, and this is still part of our given. So our given is to list what's in the if statement, which is to write two supplementary statements where that share an angle. In this case, it's angle two. Whenever you're doing proofs, one good technique is, if you're not sure what to do next, look at the given statement and write what it means. If I know that angle one and angle two are supplementary, well, the definition of supplementary says angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180. Now notice that um, when I wrote this out, I wrote measure M of angle 1. And um, that's an important piece to always include in your proofs when you are um, going to do some algebra. Okay, If you're going to write plus in there, that's algebra, and that requires values and not objects. The best way to remember it is objects are congruent to each other, values are equal. we got an equal sign, so we need values. I could also similarly, so I can fit it in the same step, so at angle 2 and angle 3 equal 180. So my given is to show they're supplementary. My first step after that is to say, what does it mean that they're supplementary? Well, supplementary means their measures add up to 180. Well, if you notice, our goal here, because we're trying to show that two angles are congruent, the two angles we're trying to show congruent are angle 1 and angle 3, so we need to get them on opposite sides of an equal sign. Well, both measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 and measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equal 180, thus by the substitution property, or you could say transitive property of equality. Either one is okay, but I'm just substituting. So the sub by the substitution property, we can say measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3. That was very nice because it does two things for me. One, it gets me 1 and 3 on opposite sides of an equal sign. And then if you notice, we've got measure of angle 2 in both sides, so we can subtract that out. So by subtracting, and I'm not going to show the transformational step. Again, this is a place where your teacher might require you to show this. But if I were to subtract 2 from both sides, or measure of angle 2, all that I'd be left with is measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 3. And I can do that because I subtracted the 2, so it's the subtraction property of equality. Now finally, I can say my last statement, since measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3, I didn't want to show that they're equal, I wanted to show that they are congruent, so I'm going to show that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. I can say that, and that's just by definition of a midpoint. Not midpoint, definition of congruent angles. Um, when we define congruent angles, we say two angles are congruent 
if their measure is the same. And so I've shown that measure of angle one equals measure of angle three, which means angle one is congruent to angle three. So I have now proven that if you have two uh, angles, one and three, both supplementary to angle two, then you can show they're congruent. It's also possible, if you notice up here, uh, where it says or congruent angles, um, you could have also had, you know, measure of angle one is congruent to measure, or supplementary to two, three is supplementary to four, and then shown that two and four are congruent, and that would then imply that one and three are congruent. So they can also be supplementary to congruent angles. Well, that wraps us up. Congruent supplements is a great theorem used all the time and can be very useful in sparing yourself some very um, difficult detail.